Hello teacher friends and dear children, good afternoon. A hearty welcome to today's live English classroom. In the previous class, we learnt about interview discourse. Isn't it? In this class, that is today, we shall learn about other discourses in the unit games and sports. Is it okay children? Now children, please look at these phrases. There are three phrases here. Biographical sketch or bio sketch or biography sketch. What are these phrases? You might have listened to your teacher talking about group A and group B discourses. Isn't it children? This biographical sketch is a group B discourse. That too a major discourse. You all know that a major discourse carries 10 marks in the examination. Now children, let's see what is a biographical sketch. How to write in the examination? A dictionary definition tells a biographical sketch is a shorter and more specific version of a biography. What is a specific version? It's a life story. Bio itself tells that it talks about life. Graphy tells something writing about the person. Life story of a person, a person could be a famous personality or any sporting personality as in the context which is given in games and sports. Now what specific information or version does it give you? Let us see. This biographical sketch focuses or highlights mostly on the ba most basic information of a person. Which person, the famous personality or the person or a sporting personality you are talking about. It highlights mostly of the base, most basic information with the goal of giving the reader an idea of his or her character and profile. Now character takes into its consideration all the things, all the experiences the writer has done or has experienced in his life. Profile about name, sometimes nickname, talks about date of birth, family, profession, education. Now, why do we need a biographical sketch of any personality? Why should we write a biographical sketch? In what way it is required for all of us? A reader like you or anyone else can get to know them at a glance. What is a glance children? That means in a short period of time or short amount of time in a few minutes or in half an hour you will be able to know what the person is. Do you want to write biographical sketch about your, your own self? How is it useful to you? It's not that biographical sketch can be written about a famous personality. You can also write your own biographical sketch. Sometimes you might have listened to your teacher or you might have read in newspapers or anywhere or you might have read some autobiographies. What is an autobiography? A biography written by himself. You write about yourself, that is called as an autobiography. Then, in what way this autobiography is useful? It is useful when applying for work, means when you apply for your job. It gives a reader, that means a person to whom you have given the autobiography, or the person who is reading your autobiography, that is the reader, will know who you are and what you can offer them in making them interested in you. Could you understand when I speak in making them interested in you? Whom do, whose biography do you, do you read? Like this, 
it could be autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi, it could be autobiography of APJ Abdul Kalam, like this many great leaders autobiography we read. Successful autobiographies or successful biographies we usually read. And many teachers in your classrooms might have told you whenever you find leisure try to read autobiographies or biographies. Why? They'll be you will be able to know what they are. And when you try to write your own biography also, you reflect upon your own feelings, upon your own experiences and write your what is that autobiography. Now children, let us come to the main central idea of today's class. What is it? Process of writing a biographical sketch. The process of writing a biographical sketch can be divided into four parts. The first part is gather information. As far as our SSC examination and ninth class examination are concerned, we don't gather information that is nothing but the profile given in the question, given as question in the examination. That is the first part called gather information. That means the examiner who is going to test you or examine you will gather information, try to keep it in the form of a question and put before you. Then what will you do now? In the question paper you reflect on the information how to write, where to keep the important points, where to keep the relevant details in, in the important paragraphs or the paragraphs you are going to write. Then you begin writing the biographical sketch. Later, after you have written the biographical sketch, what you have written, you try to, uh, what is that, revise the biographical sketch you have written. Now, the first one, what is the first one? Gather information. The information given to you as a profile to write biographical sketch. That means it is nothing but the question children which is given in the examination. That is the first part. It is given as a profile. One way you can say profile is given and you write a biographical sketch and when a biographical sketch is written you can shortcut it into a profile. They are two vice versa discourses. Number two, reflect on the information. When the biographical sketch, as you can see in the picture children, a girl, she is reflecting on the information. That means she is looking at the question. She is reading the profile before she began her writing and deciding what to expand, what to concise and what to discard. What to expand means which details are to be written in detail. That is called as expand. Concise which details are not that important to the relevant context that you try to write in very short. That means you do not write more a, a detailed paragraph of, paragraph of the given information. Next, what is discard? Sometimes details will not be included in the written biographical sketch, but that discard word is not relevant to you in the present context of 9th and 10th class. Next. What is the next one? Start writing the biographical sketch. When you begin writing the biographical set, sketch, sorry, when you begin writing the biographical sketch, the most important thing is you have to keep the relevant details in the relevant paragraphs. In the further part of my presentation, I will tell you how to keep the relevant details in the relevant paragraph. Next, after writing the biographical sketch, you see the girl, revise the biographical sketch you have written. That means you have to check the details whether you have put them correctly in the given slots that is in the relevant paragraphs and whether you have expanded all the details relevant to the context or not or sometimes the details which are not very necessary you might have expanded. So you have to revise your biographical sketch that means before you end up the biographical sketch once you have to think over whether you have written correctly, you have put all the details in the relevant slots or not, then we have to, uh, I mean to say, that is how we have to revise the biographical sketch. Okay children, that is how we came to know now the biographic writing of or the process of writing a biographical sketch can be divided into four parts. Now, let us listen to a small conversation of Ricky with his mother. Now,
right. Now Ricky is talking to his mother. Ricky is, uh, uh, ma his mother is asking Ricky what went on in the English class on that day. So Ricky is talking that what details went on in the English class he is explaining his mother. In the course of his conversation with his mother on that day at home, mother comes to know that the uh, courses, the discourses which went on in the English conversation on the English class on that day was biographical sketch. Now, my son, do you know what details are to be included in the biographical sketch? Now, Ricky told that what details are to be included in the biographical sketch? Then, name, nickname and details of birth. Then information about the family. The third component is timeline of the person's life. What do you mean by timeline? It includes education, marriage, family, profession and also what he or she did throughout his life. That is the important events in the life of a person. That is called the third component. Once again, the components of a biographical sketch. The first component is name, nickname and details of date of birth. Or sometimes nickname may be given like this. Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar. What is the nickname? Master Blaster. Like this. Sometimes it may be given in the question. Sometimes it may not be given. That is what I told you. It can be discarded. Second one is information about the family. about the parents, where he was born and, born and brought up, that is called as information about, about the siblings, that is information about the family. Next, the third component, once again I emphasize, the timeline of the person's life. The timeline of the person's life, it includes education, marriage, family, profession and also what he or she did throughout his life the important events in the life of a person. Next, take care to put or write the relevant details in relevant paragraphs. As you have seen the earlier picture children, that is whenever you write the process of writing the biographical sketch, you have to keep the details in relevant paragraphs. Now just now I was talking about name, nickname and date of birth, that includes the first paragraph. Second paragraph I was talking about or the second component I was talking about the family. That means the details of the family if they are given in the question they are to be written in the same uh, second paragraph or the corresponding paragraph. Now coming to the next one what are the details? I told you about education, family, pro profession and all this. So all these are to be given in relevant paragraphs. Now, if at all you have already seen the biographical sketch of APJ Abdul Kalam or you have read it. So, first he was working for DRDO, later he was uh, promoted to other posts of in the space ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. Later he became the president of India, he was called the missile man like this. So, take care to provide the details in the chronological or sequential order. What do you mean by chronological order? Right from the starting to the date when you are writing till the details are given, you have to write year wise. That is called as chronological order. So take care to put or write the relevant details in relevant paragraphs is the most important one. Next is take care to provide the details in chronological or sequential order. Now let us come to the fourth component. Impact of the person on the society Figure out the quality you want to emphasize and also make sure your facts support the quality you want to emphasize. That is inspiration to others. It could be in the form of awards and rewards. It could be in the form of honors. You take Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar, he every year nearly 200 underprivileged children are sponsored by Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar. So like this, the fourth component is very, very important. Figure out the quality, what important quality had inspired you or which important quality is important for the society. That's the reason why that biographical sketch is kept in front of you to write. So Stephen Hawking, 
He made a computer out of the recycled parts. He got an award also. Being a superhuman, he did many things in his life. It could be inventions also. All these are very, very important. So all these details come under the fourth component. Next, the fifth component. Because of all this contribution, because of all this, what he had done for the society, he is recognized. And that recognition came in the form of an award and honor the person has received. This becomes the fifth component. In this, we write from a higher order to a lower order. Padma Shri, Padma Vibhushan, Rajiv Khel Ratna Award, like this, we take different kinds of awards and we, get, we write in a sequential order. Now, what is the sixth component? Contribution to his or her field and society. This is the sixth component. Sometimes it could be in the form of a message to the society also. If you take any sporting personalities, what are the quotable quotes they quote also can come under the sixth component. Ramesh Tendulkar said like this, I never compare with any other batsman. It's an important message to all of us. So like this, that becomes the sixth component. So it depends upon the question what is given to you children, but the general compartments are same. Now what are the discourse markers? These discourse markers, as your teacher might have already told you in detail, these discourse markers for every discourse can be divided into two types, discourse specific features and language specific features. Now, as a biographical sketch is one of the most important discourse or any discourse has discourse markers, the, what are the discourse specific features of this biographical sketch? The first one, as I already emphasized, write the de relevant details in the relevant paragraphs only is the first discourse marker. For example, awards cannot be brought into date of birth or what is that, the second paragraph where you write about the profession or family or education or marriage. This cannot be brought. Any message or slogan is given also cannot be brought forward. So that is called the discourse specific feature, very important one. That is the write the relevant details in the relevant paragraphs only. Next. Important events, pursuits and accomplishments need to be in a chronological order that is called as logical sequencing of ideas. They need to be linked. What are the important events in the life of a person? Or what are the pursuits he has taken up? Suppose if you come to sporting personality, we have seen VVS Lakshman in the other class or Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar or any other sporting personality, a first time, what is the first debut that is entry into sports? Later, Ranji Trophy. Later, they might have played for their country, India. Later, in the international, then ODIs like that. They are called the important events pursuits. And after they have done these events and pursuits, pursuits, they might have got some accomplishments, means like this. What is the important accomplishment? Sometimes you get man of the match or anything else. That is accomplishment means that is what they have received. Sometimes when sporting personalities play, you, they get man of the match award, the best player, best bowler like this. That is their accomplishments, anything they have received for the matches they have played. So, you need to correspond their important events and pursuits and their accomplishments in that relevant paragraph. Next, what is the other discourse specific feature? Think of a perfect anecdote that shows the qualities you want to highlight. Just now I told, accomplishment. What is he best in? How does he do it? You can brainstorm a few anecdotes and choose the best one. But remember that the anecdote will only work in longer biographical sketches. Since I am talking here 
about discourse specific features I have mentioned it. But as far as the examination analysis says that rarely or I can say that anecdotes were not given in our profile which is given to write. So, if at all you do not know that writing an anecdote or you wanted more to know about the anecdote you can find out from your teacher. So, this is writing anecdote is also one of the discourse specific feature. Next, under discourse markers let us go to another discourse specific feature. What is that writing about hobbies, favorite food habits, any likes and dislikes may be earlier when we were talking about VVS Lakshman very very special they have given about hobbies, food habits. Uh, uh, what kind of TV programs he usually watches like this. These sometimes may be given the biographical sketch or the profile which is given to you sometimes be given that is what you need to discard. You need you need not worry about all this. Next uh, if given only should be included any other details if not included in the profile need not be written. Now, what I would like to tell you all is what the details are given in the question that is in the form of a profile you need to expand them. To what extent they are to be expanded depends upon the information which is given in the question. But remember friends you need to write all these details only in the relevant paragraphs. So, this is very very important as it is one of the important discourse specific feature. Now, as a you know that discourse has two kinds of as I already told you and you know it and your teacher might have told you that discourse markers can be classified into two types. Discourse specific features as we have seen just now let us come to since English is a language definitely we need to concentrate on language specific features. We generally write the biographical sketch always in past tense since we write anecdotes, since we write the important events, since we write about accomplishments, since we write about our pursuits. So, already what we have done we write. So, usually it should be in past tense. Remember children whenever you write your, your own biographical sketch we write in first, first person that is called as an autobiography. But when we in as far as in the examination is concerned in our 9th class and in 10th class whenever we write about a biographical sketch in the examination we use third person that is he or she depending upon the personality who is given. So, next a discourse specific feature as it is a general discourse specific feature which comes under language specific feature that is grammatical accuracy that is it could be syntactical syntax that is syntactical order of words. The order of words should be in a proper order next subject verb agreement ok children next conventions of writing need to be maintained. What are conventions of writing as you might have seen your teacher frequently asking and pointing and you do also editing in the class that is spelling and punctuation ok. Next in grammatical accuracy we, not, we need not we also worry about subject work agreement, we also worry about gender, we also worry about singular and plural. So, all these come under grammatical accuracy. So, depending upon the subject concerned we need to maintain grammatical accuracy conventions of writing are to be maintained. One more important one is biographical sketch however, should not be very lengthy unnecessary details of your own choice should not be included in the biographical sketch unless it is given in the question. Next the most important language specific feature for a biographical sketch and also for other discourses is coherence that is use of proper connectives. Although I told you friends that relevant details are to be included in relevant paragraphs, but friends you need to it is not connecting them, but whenever you read it it should be integrated. That means, all the relevant paragraphs should appear to your teacher or any reader as a whole one. One paragraph should not be separated from other paragraphs. How do you see that they are not separated? That means, we make use of proper connectives. 
I am, you make use of a proper connectives. What are the connectives generally we use in the course of my writing or the next paragraph or in the next detail of this biographical sketch uh, in the, uh, the education of the concerned personality or the family life of the concerned personality like this we go to the next detail, the next paragraph or the next important feature or the next thing uh, what I learnt like this you go on. So, that is use of coherence or use of proper connectives. Now children, let us go to another interesting discourse that is called as a poster. I feel at this moment that you have got a holistic idea of what a biographical discourse, discourse is. Now you know children, poster is one of the minor discourses, but it is also a, a group discourse. Minor discourses reminds you that uh, it carries 5 marks. The other discourse which we have discussed just now carries 10 marks which we call it as a major discourse. And this poster writing is very very simple and easy. You only uh, uh, what you, uh, scatter the information what is given in the poster, poster uh, as highlights uh, in the question you scatter the information in the poster or sometimes teacher may also ask you to design your own poster. At that time, you need to be very careful what, it, uh, uh, what is that details are to be included in the poster. I shall also talk about in the further course of my presentation. Okay, children. Now, let us know what is a poster. A poster uses text and images to convey complex information. poster uses text and images. So, the important thing to be underlined now is that image is very important for a poster. Now, the question in your mind is I can't or I may not be perfect in drawing images. At that time, you need to draw a block and write a picture of a what picture you want to draw. That gives the examiner that the child did not draw the picture, but the student is, draw, is interested in drawing the picture. He did not draw the picture, but he knows that poster includes an image. Next, once again, a poster uses text and images to convey complex information. I did not say that complex information is included in the poster complex information is transformed into a text and that text is again simplified in the form of an image and that, that, that complex information is conveyed in a poster. What is a poster? Poster is used to summarize large amounts of data and ideas in a compact or condensed form. Compact means more amount of information is kept in a very simple idea. How they keep, how you keep or how we have to keep, I will show you. So, poster is used to summarize once again large amounts of data and ideas in a compact or condensed form. That is called a poster. Okay, children? Now, Different presentation contexts require different things from the poster. What are the presentation contexts? Suppose as school children, we have different presentations in our school on different occasions or on different events. Hartaharam could be an event, Plantation Day could be an event, Women Empowerment Day could be an event. Women's Day could be an event, Republic Day, National Festivals, Teachers Day and the most important and enjoyable thing or enjoyable day that is Children's Day all or Human Rights Day. All these are different events which are usually conducted in schools. These events require different kinds of posters. That is the meaning is different presentation contexts require different things from the poster. What things? Now, what are the different kinds of posters? 
event posters you can divide the basing on the different presentations or different kinds of presentations we can divide our posters into event posters classroom posters band or music posters and boxing posters now you now see the picture of an event poster now what does what is the information given in the event poster it is about an organization afpmbai organization which is conducting an anniversary or its anniversary sorry in the context of its anniversary it is conducting an essay writing contest it is conducting an essay writing contest contest is a competition now you can see how to enter into that event that is essay writing contest then out of all the students who have participated in the contest 10 winners will be chosen and they will receive 2500 rupees each then they have given you the deadline and they have given you a spiral notebook on which the the topic is given that means once again i would like to tell you children in the poster name of the competition who is organizing the competition what is the deadline or last date for submission of the entries and who are going to be the winners how many winners are going to be selected what topic is there and how to subscribe or how to take part in the contest all the is are the important components of an event poster now let's go to another poster this is called classroom poster in our classroom we usually keep such kind of posters what is it we respect each other we try our best that means this is the code of conduct of a classroom a, cl a classroom in general follows this code of conduct that code of conduct is presented in the classroom of one of the important classrooms okay we respect each other we try our best we are a team we learn from mistakes we create we celebrate each other's success so the general code of conduct of the classroom is given in the form of a poster and this poster we call it as a classroom poster okay now let us go to another poster that is called as a concert poster what is it children it is a concert poster now you see a celebrity there the live concert day date month how to make advance booking where is the venue at what time it is organized at what time the doors are going to be closed now you have seen an event poster you have seen in a classroom poster now you have just watched a concert poster see each poster has what is that different components so that is what i told you in the beginning of the session that a presentation context differ differs and so the posters also differ from one context to the other context now let's watch another poster that is called boxing event poster what is a boxing event poster you see here the moment you have seen you see the image now i would like to once again recall that in all the posters you have seen there are pictures there are images what does it tell you children that all posters the important point in a poster is there should be an image there should there should be a slot for the image if at all you can't draw or if the, your time doesn't permit now you see here again here day is given date is given there is a motivating line come see the action so this is what i told you the complex information is condensed into a simple form a readable form which everybody can read 
why this poster requires a readable form which everybody should read is what I will be telling you in the further part of my what is that discourse. Okay. Now, this is what where is a West Adelaide football club who is organizing. Sometimes the person or the organization who organizes this event, sometimes it is given in the beginning and sometimes it is given at the end of the poster. As we have seen in ninth class that there is a poster preparation where Rajababu Laughing Club and the people who are organizing that, that Rajababu Laughing Club or Hyderabad Laughing Club is given at the end, Rajababu prize is sponsored by the Hyderabad Laughing Club is given in the beginning of the poster. Sometimes they may be given at the end. So, friends, it is your choice. The, uh, the person who issued the poster can be at the beginning or at the end. That is what I told you. The highlights of the poster, which is given in the form of a question, is to be scattered as a poster where you can use your own place. Of course, there is a layout, but still, sometimes to highlight the information, there is some flexibility of writing a poster. Okay, children? Now, let us come to the important features of a poster of writing that has greater flexibility of what can be included. That is what I told you just now that a poster gives you more flexibility of writing information and you can write in your own way. That is why I told you poster is a very interesting for all the children to prepare a poster. Okay. It is a creative form of writing that has greater flexibility of what can be included. That means, when the expanded information is uh, or the complex information which can be written in a condensed form, you can use, use your own language, rhythmic language, where grammatical accuracy is not important. The person who is reading, it should be readable to the person or the person should be able to you have written. The reader is very Next. Another important feature of a poster, it features a short title that is very catchy to con each and every passerby. It features a short title, your title should not be very long. Why? And this title should be very catchy. Why? To hook on each and every passerby. Means children, where do we see posters? At public places. A passer by, there are many passers by who are going along the public places. So, these public places where we stick on, the title is very short and it is very catchy. Every passer by mo gets motivated or interested to read. And since it is catchy, it is, they feel interested. Since it, since it is very short, they read it with a, with a glance. That means, by a glance or at a glance, they will be able to know what a poster is about. Now, one more important feature of a poster, it should be readable in 5 or 10 minutes. That is why a poster is very, very important. You need not use long, lengthy grammatical sentences. That is why again I told you it should be very catchy and the title should be very short. The passerby pa passing in a bus or any vehicle should be, should be able to read this poster. So, at one stop he read the half of it, at another stop he will be able to read the other part of it. So, totally a poster should be readable in 5 or 10 minutes. Places where we find posters. They are usually pasted where people log in to read. What do you mean by login? That means they start reading the poster. They feel like reading the poster. What are they? At what places you find us? Theatres, bus stops, ad spaces and traffic points. Where do we find posters, children? Theatres, bus stops, ad spaces and traffic points. Now, why these posters became a part of our life? And these become a part of our examination. Why? That means, since they became a part of our life, they became a part of our examination. Why? Because very important point is, they appeal to all people including illiterates. That means, what did we use for illiterates children? Once again, I would like to recall that we have used an image. Just now, in the concert poster, the celebrity was highlighted. In the boxing poster, the boxers were highlighted. 
that is how people come to know what the poster is about although they cannot read. So, it appeals not only to literates but also to illiterates that is why the posters have become a part of our life. Now, once again let me tell you what does posters include. Posters include photograph, picture or an illustration of that, that communicates some, infima some information. Posters include photograph, picture or an illustration that communicates some information. What information does it, con does it convey? It conveys the information depending upon the picture you have chosen. Just now you have seen the picture of boxing, you have seen the classroom picture, you have seen the picture of an event. So, they have conveyed different kinds of, one poster was conveying, conveying information about essay writing, one poster was conveying information about classroom code of conduct, one was uh, conveying information about a concert and one was conveying information about boxing. Moreover, they are not densely packed with words. See, you could say day, date, time, venue, uh, who are issuing it, how many prizes are going to be given. So, all these were very simple. They are not cluttered with information. That means, it is not taking more amount of time to read all this information which is there in the poster. That is why we say that it is not cluttered. Next, simple short sweet rhythmic language is used. Just now, plant, plant, plant like this for Harita Haram. Save trees, save lives. These are all rhythmic language which is used. Our earth is our mother like this. Okay? So, they uh, simple short sweet language is used and right from the young to the old also can read the poster. So, poster has become a part of our life. Why not long sentences? They do not attract viewers or readers who are passing by because they cannot read at a glance. They cannot read with a small amount fraction of time they have with them when they are passing by. Why not more colors? The information in the poster becomes unintelligible. What do you mean by unintelligible? You can't read it. You can highlight it, but more colors if they are used, it becomes unintelligible. That is, pe people cannot read what is there. That is, we cannot read and understand easily. In our examinations, also, we should not color our posters. That's it, children. I underlined it. Do we? No, we don't. Another important feature. Posters should be visually appealing using textual as well as graphic elements. What are the graphic elements? Again, the images what we are going to use that is called as a graphic elements. Posters need to be eye catching and informative which I already told you passes when, whenever passes pass by a poster they need to hook on or log in to read it. Whenever it is eye catching they do it. Who mostly use posters or Posters are the, what are the tools of advertisers? Means, advertisers use posters. So, posters are the handy tools of advertisers. Do we po use posters in our classrooms? Yes. What kind of posters we use in our classroom? Alphabet and grammar, numeracy, scientific tables and cycles, safety and other instructions, artworks displaced by students. They are, they are not new for you all. You, science teacher tells you one poster, mathematics teacher tells you one poster to prepare, English teacher tells you one poster to prepare. All these come under these subcategories. You have seen the classroom poster just now. What are the other posters you have seen? Concert or music posters. What do they showcase? Person's favorite artist or music group. Where do we find them? Generally, if your favorite actor is there, where, you, where will you keep? In your study room, if you are in a hostel near your dormitories like this. So, children's rooms and hostel dormitories and apartments, generally we find these concert posters or your favorite actor posters. This is a music or concert poster. What is the other type? Event posters. Generally, we do not find event posters. We generally find event posters in public places because it gives information about an event or a rally. This kind of event poster you might have seen in your notice board of your school, school where it is a public place where all students move by or pass by. 
What is another type of poster we have seen that is a boxing poster, we, it highlights forthcoming event, venue, date, ticket price etc. This was a poster. Now the, the highlights of a poster, once again I would like to remind you all, team, occasion, category, award, price amount, contact number, deadline, all these are given in our textbook as a question and we prepared those posters I feel in the examination also these highlights will be given and we have to write a poster. Sometimes examiners may not give you like this, they may ask you to write like this, cleanliness is next to godliness because personal hygiene is important, prepare a poster like this also it may be given in the examination. Now what are the discourse markers of a poster, discourse specific features, show in the context in emotive language, appropriate format, layout and design, these are the discourse specific features of the poster. What are the language specific features, simple and short sentences, rhythmic language, well formed constructions, conventions of writing, children you have seen all these in the recent posters what I have presented you in, in the course of my presentation. Thank you once again, thank you TSAT, SCRT teachers and my dear children, extended thanks to Google and Yahoo, thank you, bye bye.